Are you a trouble teen looking to get in with the wrong crowd? Do you enjoy meaningless storylines and glorified plot devices? Then come on down to Shy Town, Illinois. You'll love the ambience. Fuck! Why is I'm right here? I'm gonna come straight out the gates here and say I love Stranger Things. I regularly rewatch the series front to back and I don't take issue with some of the more commonly pointed out flaws with the show. However, my blissful ignorance can only stretch so far. There's one part of Stranger Things that even I cannot redeem, nor do I want to. Season 2, Episode 7, Eleven in Chirac. In this episode, we see Eleven in the aftermath of communicating with her catatonic mother, a subject of the infamous MK Ultra mind control experiments, who then reveals a memory to Eleven of another girl held in Dr. Brenner's laboratory. After Eleven tells her mother's sister, Auntie Becky, about the girl, Becky retrieves a folder of some of the children Brenner was suspected of taking from their parents. Eleven finds the right picture amongst the collection and initially fails to locate the girl, but subsequently finds her later that night. Eleven eventually flees the house when her auntie calls Florence, Hopper's assistant, hoping to receive some support with the sudden appearance of her sister's supposedly dead daughter. The rest of the episode, picks a story of meeting her estranged sister, Eight, also known as Carly, and eventually partaking in some violent retribution against various figures who worked with Dr. Brenner. Along the way, we are introduced to Carly's ragtag group of vigilantes, Axel, Mick, Funshine, and Dottie. Together, they partake in Chicago cultural customs, evading the police, home invasion, and robbing a gas station. Sounds fun, right? So what's so wrong about this episode? Well, the short answer would be all of it, because at the end of the episode, Eleven just leaves. We never see any of these characters again across the next two seasons, and I seriously doubt they'll be in the fifth when it arrives. The entire episode is one big, plot-rushing, redundant experience filled with throwaway characters. I mean, I don't even want to see any of these characters again. I don't like them, and I don't see how anyone could. They weren't written to be likable in any way, and I'm glad that they will most likely never return to the show. It seems the only reason they even have this episode in the first place is to drum up some kind of tension about whether Eleven returns to Hawkins, an event we pretty much know is going to happen. If this were a Naruto episode, it would land firmly in the filler column along with the other half of the show. There's an argument to be made that this episode shows how strong Eleven is and perhaps gives her a glimpse of what can become of you without friends like hers. Even if this is the case, they did not need a whole episode of hunting down bad guys and general degeneracy to accomplish this. Eleven's storyline for most of season 2 is completely separated from that of her friends in Hawkins anyway, as she becomes restless with her cabin life. We knew that she and her friends would convene at some point and that she would likely save the day, which makes the entire episode seem like a cliched attempt at inserting Eleven back into the group when they're at their lowest. Well, that's all I really have to say about easily the worst subplot in Stranger Things. If you didn't like anything I said, feel free to really give me what for in the comments. I read them all. Besides that, stay greasy, friends.